and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It's the top 16 superstars round 30 of the series. It's the Nations Cup up first. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me, Chaz Draycott. We're here to guide you through the action today for this region. It's the North America region we have up next for you. Let's take a look with no further ado then at the point standings after 29 rounds. You can see Turismo Defsun leads the way, 22,525 points. He's got quite a significant advantage there, uh, Chaz, over Carl Lamb. 21,867 is the American op. Yeah, big, big gap to the leader there. So hopefully he'll be looking to, uh, to maintain that as we look further down the order, some of them are spread out, some of them are quite close together. So you've got these little bundles of, uh, of drivers that will be battling together. Probably going to see that on track as well today, of course, around the, uh, the circuit of Mount Panorama. Um, quite a difficult circuit to race around, of course, um, and it's easy, it's easy for groups to bunch up and break away from each other. Yeah, it certainly is. Let's take a closer look at that Mount Panorama circuit then, shall we? Because it is an absolute classic in terms of Gran Turismo and in terms of uh, real-world motorsport as well. Of course, you've got the uh, eight hours, of, or the 12 hours of Bathhouse, rather, I should say. You've got the 1,000-kilometer uh, supercars race there as well. 6.2 kilometers long it is. And it is an absolute treat to be racing around here as well. You can see a very famous corner such as Hell Corner, Griffiths Bend, Quarries, the Cutting, and the Plenty Park, also Skyline, the Dipper, the Forest Elbow, and also the Conrod Strait as well. Every corner has its own story. 174 meters of elevation change, as you can see from the bottom there at uh, Murray's Corner, the final turn on this circuit, all the way up at the top. It's going to be very exciting to see how these drivers are going to fare around here, isn't it? And uh, as we take a closer look at those corners there now as well, Chaz, uh, lots of tight and twisty ones from turns 11 down to 19. Some faster and flowing ones, though, at the uh, closing part of the lap, turns 20 to 22 in particular. Yeah, it's a very dynamic circuit to race around, and it's a real challenge to get a lap together because there are so many corners in quick succession. You've really got to have your wits about you when you're coming uh, down the mountain. It's unbelievable. And you've got to really have the commitment through McPhillamy Park as well. I mean, we're going to see it throughout this race that these cars, these Group 2 machines, really fly through there. They stick like nothing I've seen before. It's amazing. Let's take a look at the race details then, shall we, and see what these drivers are going to be contending with here at Mount Panorama. So they're in Group 2 machinery. They've had a 10-minute qualifying session already. We've got a nine-lap race for them to contend with in a few moments' time. That's just a total driving distance of uh, under 56 kilometres. You can see their fuel consumption at times two, uh, tyre wear at times seven as well. In terms of strategy, well, they've got two tyre compounds available. Racing soft tyres will go about five laps uh, at, at its prime uh, race distance for those guys. But then the racing medium tyre uh, goes for a nine laps of the entire race duration, but it's there and thereabouts a second a lap slower. Uh, but of course, if you don't pit, you're going to be gaining or not losing that much time. It's about 15 seconds in total for a pit stop here as well. Yeah, they've really got to sort of weigh it up as the race goes on. Um, of course, we've seen in other regions that we've covered so far that the guys have been actually making these racing softs last till the end, but the lap times really do fall off a cliff. So it's whether some of these guys may pit towards the end and just think I'll rather have those last few laps worth of, you know, being a couple of seconds a lap quicker because it is quite a long lap here, or whether you'll see any of them start on the mediums. By the look of it, I don't think any of them are on the mediums. So I think it's probably going to be another soft, and if there is a change... They're going to be on soft again. Well, without further ado, let's head over to the grid. The cars lined up on the grid. Carl Lamb on pole position. Turismo Def Sun alongside Turismo Leicester as well. Those guys in the top three in the championship as things stand. Keep an eye out for Turismo Windfire, a Hendrix and Put Put as well as the field is led over the timing line by Carl Lamb as we head down towards the first corner to get this Nations Cup race for the North America region underway down towards turn one we go. Carl Lamb holds on to his race lead. Turismo Def Sun in second position there and keep an eye out for Turismo Windfire with a bit of a wiggle out of the first turn. He is the only driver behind the wheel of of the Lexus RCF machine. So a bit of a, an interesting call there for Turismo Win 5, but clearly a car that he looks to be quite comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. Everyone else at the moment seems to be in the, uh, the Nissan GTRs of differing specs, but all GR2 machinery, of course, and they're all very, very quick. We've seen the, uh, the downforce really working its magic down there. There's Turismo Lester in the very, very bright gold machine. <laughs> Completely <laughs> chrome gold car up the hill. You're not going to miss him in a hurry. But he's got the uh, his teammate of Turismo Defson ahead of him. And, of course, his teammate of Turismo Windfire behind him. So hopefully these guys working together as Windfire becomes very acquainted with the wall there through the right-hander. Sparks go flying, of course. We'll see a lot of that over the course of the race. Some of these guys being careful not to pick up penalties, of course, because round here is very important. 
Yeah, it certainly is. If you make contact with the wall and you're deemed to have not lost any time or gained an advantage, you will be hit with a penalty. And that penalty zone, as we said earlier on, uh, is either on the Conrad straight or the straight after Hell Corner. Here we are on board, meanwhile, with Hendricks 3 2 3. He's got AMS Marzan very close for company behind as they go through the Forest Elbow for the first time of asking. There is Put Put, who's managed to get ahead of Hendricks on this opening lap there, then. So good stuff from the Canadian driver. He is now inside the top five. Meanwhile, Turismo Windfire is getting a little bit closer there to Turismo Leicester. That's the battle for third place that is going on. You can see him closing up in the slipstream as they come through the chase for the first time. Running on board here with Hendricks as they go in towards this chicane now through the left and then the right. Very close racing between all of these guys. Bill beginning to spread out a little bit though on here on this opening lap as uh, Carl Lamb just tries to increase his advantage out in front. It's about seven tenths of a second at the end of lap one here, Jazz. Yeah, really, really good first lap for these guys. A couple of wiggles here and there, though. The guys really trying to get on the throttle as soon as they can at the corners, trying to carry as much speed as they can on the brakes. But through Hell Corner, you can see there's just a couple of tenths of a second between all of these guys back down to seventh place. Then we've got 2.6 seconds to TTG Zenit. But the, uh, the Lexus doing a fine job there in fourth place. Here is AMS, sorry, AMS Marzan in the Nissan into the right-hander really chucking the car and you can see the rear end just wanted to step out there but as they go back up the hill you can see this train of cars in front of him and positions are plenty you've got to think if there's a mistake made looking very very good indeed is AMS miles down here as things stand at the moment in a good position to try and take advantage if others in front of him do falter and of course it's so easy to make a, a slight error here at Mount Panorama and pay a big price for it isn't it yeah definitely no runoff areas really there's a couple well there's one of them Skyline well, it's a very scary corner because even if you do go a little bit wide, it's not really somewhere that you can, you know, recover that very easily. Mm. If you're going to go wide at Skyline, it means because you're going in there too quick and it's not the best of places in the world to slow down. Neither is Forest Elbows. You see the two uh, race leaders here really close together. That's Carl Lamb and Turismo Defson down the Conrad Strait. They go right together. Same car, same livery. So yeah, here's AMS Marzan as well, trying to pick off Hendricks 3-2-3. He opts to the grass, opts for the outside line as Hendricks tries to defend his trap position. Oh, a bit of contact between them as they run side by side down the Comrade straight then, heading in towards the chase. Hendricks will have the inside line, but if AMS Marzan can hold that line to the outside, surely he's going to have a lunge into the cane. Chicane, you can bet it bottom dollar he is. He gets squeezed there by Hendricks. He runs off onto the grass as well. They're running very close, almost nose to tail, almost side by side once again. AMS Marzan doesn't manage to find his way through oh. and actually picks up a five second penalty for contact there as well i don't know about that one that was a bit of a racing incident from my point of view mm. yeah I, I think I'm, yeah i'll go with you on that one to be honest because i mean he gave him the place back it seemed like he was very slow off the corner but i thought he was giving him the position back just by letting off a little bit it's a shame that he got the penalty from that but it's well what is it is now i suppose um, we see Turismo Windfire here on the back of the very bright gold car of Turismo Lester, just giving his, uh, his teammate a little bit of a push down the straight there just to help him out a little bit. They're not going to try and go for a move and slow each other down. He's just going, here you go, here's some of my horsepower for you. Well, the thing is as well, if these guys work together, let's not forget, of course, they can close up onto the back of the leading duo as things stand. And those two are pretty close on circuit as well. So if they can try and work together, try and close that gap up by bumping each other on the straight, it will help them and it will make a very interesting quartet of a leading battle. Yeah, definitely. Through McPhillamy Park, they're clipping the walls on the outside. They've got to think about Put Put, who's behind them there, the Canadian driver in fifth place in the Nissan as they come into Skyline. Look at the speed that they're coming into there. It's amazing, the downforce of these cars and the grip that they have as they go through the dipper. Speaking of grip, there's not really any through there. Through the quick left-right-left -left section now into Forest Elbow. The wall on the right-hand side there, very misleading because it goes really round and smooth and then suddenly straightens up again mm. where you'd expect it to go around. And a lot of guys have been clipping that on the way in and clipping that wall on the way out as we see two of them there just behind behind Outlaw Quadrant. What a username that is. As they go down the, the Conrad Strait, TG, TTG Destroyer is following him there. There's TG, uh, TTG Zenit. We're both going to get wrong, aren't we, there? In uh, sixth position, so Outlaw Quadrant, the meat in a TTG sandwich as things stand. Going through that right hand and then up onto the uh, brakes we go as we come to the lowest points in the circuit here as we head towards Murray's corner. This is the final corner on the circuit, and look now how these two are still working together. Put Put also trying to follow them through as well. That gap hasn't really come down by any significant margin from uh, Turismo Defs, uh, the two Turismo Defs, I'm wrong, but excuse me, in second position, but through the left hand that we go, riding on board with Put-Put here, he's going to want to get himself onto the back of this uh, duo that are battling at the moment because he could try and follow them through and it could make it a quintet that are battling for position. 
Yeah, and, well, the more the merrier, I suppose, in these sorts of battles, and especially on a track like this where overtaking space isn't at a premium. It's uh, it's going to be a very difficult move to get done if he goes for any of them, because the thing is, if you're in a position like Turismo Windfire is now, if Put Put closes up on the back of them and he tries to make a move on his teammate, he's got to think about the repercussions of whichever one of them loses out is then going to be Ooh. under threat from Put Put. We see contact there between Outlaw Quadrant and TTG Destroyer, and you can see just the gap opening up now as he's backed out because of it. Yeah, very close indeed between those two, a little bit too close for comfort. TTG Destroyer, uh, thankfully not destroying Outlaw Quadrant's race there, keeping them both on the straight and narrow they were. Here is Turismo Lester, meanwhile, who is still having pressure piled onto him by Turismo Windfire, and uh, Windfire there doing a really good job behind the wheel of that Lexus RCF. As we said, the only uh, time that Lexus has been represented in this field here in North America, everybody else in these Nissan GTR machines a little bit wide there as well for put put in the background in fifth position keep an eye out for that he's pushing clearly very hard in these uh, stages of this these mid stages of the race and crucially here Chaz as well we're coming up towards the point where the drivers will be pitting uh, very soon or in theory should be pitting yeah. very soon yeah it'll be interesting to see whether anyone does um, in some of the other regions we covered they didn't actually pit in the end um, but to be fair it depends on who's around you and who's going to be doing the same at the time I suppose You've got to really think about your competitors in these scenarios and make the snap decisions that you need to. But it's good to see that all the guys are keeping it clean at the moment. We've had only a tiny bit of contact, and to be fair, the racing's been very clean throughout all these series that we've covered. And that's one of the beautiful sides of sim racing these days. Everyone does take it so seriously. Um, I mean, if you go back on to other racing games of, of a couple of years ago, any, any sort of online lobby would be a complete mess, but... From what we see here from these pro guys, this is awesome to watch. Exactly, and it's what we love to see in terms of uh, racing on Gran Turismo as well. Nice, clo close, clean, fair racing uh, between the drivers. Lots of respect out there on track, of course, lots of competition as well. And still Outlaw Quadrant sits as this meet in a TTG sandwich at the moment. Zenith in front uh, and Destroyer behind. Meanwhile, here is Put Put, who's significantly closed out that gap to Turismo Windfire in fifth position. So this is now a three-way scrap, essentially, for the final spot on the podium with Turismo Death Sun and Carl Lamb in the race lead at the moment being able to increase their advantage out in front of the race. Carl Lamb having a near two-second advantage over Death Sun. Death Sun in turn having 2.6 seconds over this trio who are battling for that final spot on the podium. Yeah, and it's a very coveted position, of course, to get onto the rostrum. But our two race leaders doing a fine job at the moment. Here is Zenit with Quadrant behind, and then his teammate Destroyer there as well. Out the dipper they go. Oh, Ooh, big right contact there. with the wall. I was amazed he didn't get a penalty for that, to be fair. NZ hanging in the wings there in 10th place as well. He's actually uh, crept up on these guys and got into this battle now. So it's a four-way scrap. But like you say, TTG sandwich at the moment for Outlaw Quadrant. He's going to want to uh, to get past Zenit as quickly as possible, and here's his chance. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, he's in the slipstream there. He's going to try and think about something, maybe going for the outside line through the chase and having setting himself up for the inside line to the next corner but a defensive driving there from TTG Zenit doesn't allow Outlaw Quadrant to find his way through a little bit wide though through the second part of that chicane that allows Outlaw Quadrant to get a really good exit TTG Zenit pulls alongside uh, does Outlaw Quadrant on the outside of him going in towards Murray side by side they come and keep an eye out as well for the man who's behind and now alongside of TTG Destroyer side by side they come now between Destroyer and between Quadrant down to the first corner Destroyer's going to have the inside line he's going to have track position a lot up at the brakes but he gets the move done he's now in to eighth position so it's the two TTG teammates who are battling whilst they've been squabbling NZ as you said earlier on Chaz has been closing up that gap very nicely indeed and now he is right on the back ready to try and pounce as and when he needs to here comes Destroyer trying to send it down the inside of teammate Zenith at the right hander he does so aggressive forceful move that falls him into the clutches of Quadrant who also gets up the inside there as well so no love lost between the two TTG teammates wow. and contact as well between NZ and uh uh, Outlaw Quadrant, they went into the uh, barrier there at the background. TTG Zenit being given a penalty, and uh, you can see there, well, that is exactly why for that contact uh, between Outlaw uh, Quadrant, sorry, between TTG Zenit and between NZ, I apologise, who was into the wall there. Oh, a little bit wide there for another driver as well as they come that through the right Zenit, hander. I think, yeah, Zenit's just gone onto the grass and clipped the wall, but he just seemed to come over on NZ there. And oh, he's just going down the order, isn't he? He's clearly, mm. clearly having some problems here, is TTG Zenit, so that is disappointing. Sorry to cut in front of you there, Chaz, oh, but. Sorry, uh, very, very disappointing for TTG Zenit for his uh, race to come unravelled in such unfortunate circumstances. Yeah, he was really putting up a good fight and defending well. He had his teammate then come through as well. But once um, once Destroyer went for the move, it just all went to pot for him. He, uh, he just watched it go away and then obviously 
moved over on NZ, that gave him the penalty. A bit more contact after that, runs wide, and it's just all unraveled, like say, down in 13th place now. NZ here up to ninth position, chasing down Outlaw Quadrant, just behind him as well. Oakley Fino USA, he's up to 10th position, he's a bit under the radar at the moment, chasing these guys down. But it means that Put Put at the moment is now a bit further clear of the battle with Hendrix 3-2-3, just 2.3 seconds back, and nearly four seconds then to TTG Destroyer. So it's opened up a little bit now because of that battle. And here is your second place driver, Turismo Defson. He's having a bit of a lonely one at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, certainly he is. Not really much to uh, do in terms of competition out there on track, but he's quite happy, I think, pounding around there in second position. That's not a bad result to take at the chequered flag as things stand. Just over two and a half laps now remaining here at Mount Panorama, so it seems quite clear that these drivers are not going to be pitting uh, for any more tyres. If they did, of course, it would be completely pointless unless everybody else did the same and that would then balance it all out, but that's very unlikely uh, for anybody else to try and follow suit. So now the main thing is, of course, everybody is in the same boat and uh, they will have to run on worn tyres, uh, very worn tyres, at the end here of this race as Turismo Windfire rubs up against the wall. That won't be helping his drive as he tries to get closer to his fellow Turismo racing teammate of Turismo Leicester. Close in front there, through the left-hander we go, over the brow of the hill and head down towards through the dipper. Here's Oakley Fino USA, 10th place with NZ just in front there. Look at the speed they carry out of McPhillamy Park then into Skyline. It's amazing to watch, such commitment from these guys. Incredible, absolutely incredible stuff. As all oh, through the dipper, he's very out of shape in front of him there was Outlaw Quadrant. Manages to keep it all together though, as they go into Forest Elbow for the seventh time out of this nine lap race. Onto the Conrad Strait once again, flat on the throttle, and look at the speed climbing up there. 130 mile an hour and 150 before I've even finished saying it. Very impressive stuff indeed. Here is Turismo Wind Fire in the Lexus then. Hard on the brakes they go in towards the chicane uh, for the seventh time out of nine of asking here at Mount Panorama, ready to go into that final corner of Murray's. And look at how that gap has steadily decreased lap after lap. In terms of the lap times between Turismo uh, Leicester and uh, Turismo Windfire, well, Turismo Windfire has been around about a tenth of a second or so uh, slower, actually, than his Turismo Leicester teammate. But last time around, he was actually four tenths of a second faster. So that is a very impressive turn of events there for Windfire. Clearly, he's a bit more comfortable, perhaps, on the used tyres, the worn tyres, at the end of this race. Yeah, that's what it's all about, is, is drivers adapting to what they've got at the time. Um, a lot of them will have done maybe a bit more practice on worn tyres, for example, or they just get used to how the car's behaving as he really chucks it in sideways there, does Turismo Windfire. Um, it, like I say, it's, it's down to who's used to what. Some guys can really cope with worn tyres and a car that doesn't handle as well as they want it to. Other guys get too used to the car being picture perfect most of the time and just doing exactly what they want it to and they can't really stay with it once it starts to go away from them so that's when it sort of separates the men from the boys as NZ really sideways out of there on the throttle very sideways but um, he's still in ninth place they're holding on but he's trying to get some style points out for it as well it's a shame <laughs> they don't give him out or he'd be probably winning the race for it. yeah certainly so well the uh, style points there for NZ will sadly come to nothing finishing in ninth position that is not a very strong result there for the Canadian driver. We've seen him in other series like the Toyota GR uh, Super GT Cup. Of course, he was performing very well in that so far as well. So it's disappointing to see him not finishing as far or being as far up the order as he should be in the latter stages here of this race. Meanwhile, no such dramas for the man who is leading the race of Carl Lamb at the moment. We've hardly mentioned him over the course of this one, and he's getting ready to come through to start his final lap. He's led lights to uh, this point here so far, and he's just got 6.2 kilometers left to negotiate here at the Mount Panorama circuit. Yeah, mature a, drive, isn't it? Oh yeah, very, very mature drive. He's just kept his nose clean and just driven away, nearly a five second lead, as you say. Just coming over the line to start his final lap then into Hell Corner, he will go. Up the straight, bit of style on exit though, <laughs> making sure he uses every little inch of the circuit. There is the uh, the penalty line as it goes through. I think just one thing to mention to you as well about Carl Lamb, just to give you an idea of how hard he's still pushing. His lap time last time around was a 151.530. Compare that to the man in second place, Turismo Defsun, a 152.788. That's eight tenths of a second difference. Yeah, absolutely flying. Really, really going for it at the moment. Um, actually, more than that, to be honest, 1.2 seconds, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, you're completely spot on there, isn't it? It's uh, yeah, big difference in terms of lap time. So very impressive stuff there from Carl uh, Lamb and Turismo Def. So Mass has never been my strong point and continues not to be so now. <laughs> well, I know that that's the number seven. Yeah, so. quite. That's about the extent of my Mass knowledge as well, to be honest with you. So, uh, there is TTG Destroyer in seventh place, doing a really good job, actually, 
so far in this race, whereas his teammate TTG Zenit, his race went from bad to worse, of course, picked up that penalty and then slipped down the order very suddenly. Seventh position he is so far, TTG Destroyer. TTG Zenit, meanwhile, his teammate, as we said, down in the 15th position. He'll be sat there scratching his head after the race, looking like he's won the lottery but lost the ticket because it's been a big disappointment yeah. for him so far. Really has as we come into Forest Elbow once more. Look at the tyres, really, really not coping there. The understeer, you could you could feel it through the top of the car then from Turismo Windfire down the Conrod straight. Luckily, understeer isn't something you need to worry about down here. Just needs to keep his foot planted and get it over the crest and get it into the chase. But it's looking like Carl Lamb is going to take a very, very convincing victory here. 5.96 second lead, and here he is. Brilliant stuff from Carl Lamb, lights the flag, victory in the North America region for the Nations Cup of the top 16 superstars. The American takes victory here in Australia. Turismo Defstun holds on for a slightly lonely but very well-deserved second place, and Turismo Leicester does hold on for that final spot on the rostrum against Turismo Windfire. Then comes Put Put, who's had again a quiet race there in fifth position. Hendricks in sixth, TTG Destroyer in seventh, eighth place of Outlaw Quadrant, NZ in ninth, Oakley Fino inside the top ten as the rest of the field come over the timing line. There's DNA Boulder, uh, hardly mentioned him at all in this race, but he finishes down in twelfth position ahead of Racing Swordsman in thirteenth position. Fourteenth goes away of Bill Barder, uh, the TTG Zenit of course with that race to forget. So there we are, we can see the results on your screen now. Carl Lamb takes a very well-deserved and commanding victory uh, out in front by 6.3 seconds over Turismo Defson. Turismo Leicester there in third place. Turismo Windfire in fourth, Put Put, uh, Hendricks, T TTG Destroyer in seventh, and then Outlaw Quadrant inside the top eight positions here at Mount Panorama. Ninth and tenth is NZ and Oakley Fino. AMS Marzan in 11th, DNA Boulder in 12th. You can see they're calm uh, down in 16th position right at the bottom there. And it was, of course, very close all the way throughout that race as well. If you looked at the timing all the way down that field, even though the top two ran away with it quite a lot, the rest of them were so close together. It's great to see them so close at the end of the entire race. Absolutely. Well, here are the points rankings then after 30 rounds. You can see not too much change in terms of the uh, top 10 order. In fact, no change at all in the top 10. However, the Chaz, Hendricks and Put Put making some good ground just on the fringes there. Yeah, Hendricks, of course, got a good finish in that race, and he was a, co a good couple of places ahead of, uh, of NZ in that one after the uh, little incident that NZ had. So he's going to be uh, very happy to have taken at least, well, there's about 300 points difference, isn't there? So Put Put as well, knocking a couple of other guys down the order as well. He'll be hoping to keep gaining places into the last uh, couple of rounds of the championship. Yeah, certainly will. Well, speaking of the next Gran Turismo event that we have got taking place, whatever you do, don't miss the 24th and 25th of August. It's World Tour 3 in New York. We've got Nations Cup and Manufacturer Series action to bring you. Join us there because it is going to be absolutely fantastic.